Hi everyone, it's Miriam, and welcome to part two of my PBO paint mixed in resin test. In part one, I used three colors and a lot of paint resin mixture poured on this tiny canvas. Because usually with the PBO paints, the more you use, the more pronounced the honeycomb effect will be. But we were left with a blanket of the pearly mica powder from the prism paint rising to the top and causing this more muted effect. In this test, we're going to pour a lot less and see what happens. Okay, I've mixed up another small batch of resin. And what I'm gonna do now is try another little pour with less. I wanna see if less is more in this case. I'm going to use more of that deep blue vitri background and have some clear resin too as a background in a couple of spots and use a small amount of Pebio prism colored resin and then see if the effect still gets swallowed up. I'm not gonna be so concerned about covering the entire canvas um, so there may be some blue negative space still exposed because I'm not going to tilt the canvas and try to make the resin flow in any way. The two prism colors that I'm going to use for this are English red and shell white. So I'm going to pour more of this as the base because I have um, a suspicion that that might be part of what's needed. And then see. And then I'm going to use, like I said, some clear in some spots. So I'm going to circle it in clear and see if clear has any impact on the pebios. And then on the borders, I'm gonna leave them alone and just let the pebios color the t this side and that side on their own and see what happens there. Alrighty, so there's the base. Now this is the eggshell, all nice and mixed up. And I'm gonna run it along the edge. and let it bleed into the clear and then put some little spots of it in the clear see what happens there okay and then I'm going to add a little more of this in the center here to break up and now the red Hmm. Maybe a little white there. Let's see. Just on this edge, maybe. Ah, see it bleeds into that. 
sort of crawls over the top. The mica crawls over the top. All right, so now, of course, I want to do it on the other side because I don't want to watch that happen again. All right, well, I guess I can just cover up this one little corner since it's the only uncovered corner. Alrighty, and now I'm not gonna touch it. I'm gonna stop there, leave it alone, and come back to it in a few minutes and see what happens. Okay, so half an hour later, this is what we have. The white, the eggshell white mica has sort of taken over again and formed that skin. And then the English reds mica has crawled over this way. And remember, this is perfectly level. So it's crawled over pretty far. And it crawled inward this way. Not as far as it did on this side. So maybe I had poured more here. I don't remember. Um, and then the blue, the dark vitri, it's spread that way. I don't know if you can see the shadow of it underneath. Um, and the mica skin sort of gets broken up a little bit over here and then here. So I think ultimately the Pebio's mica behaves differently than sort of like perfect pearl mica, which doesn't do this floating on top thing that's going on here. So it might be a smaller particle size, I'm not sure. But it's an interesting effect, but I would use it sparingly unless you want it to take over like this. I now see that it doesn't matter whether or not I torch it or use a heat gun or tilt it, it's still gonna do this. So it was an interesting experiment. I've learned quite a bit and I hope you got something out of it. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up. Leave comments um, about questions you might have or ideas you might have or share your experience if you've used this. And absolutely subscribe because I will be experimenting with lots of other things, and I will also start creating pretty things too. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully they'll be pretty. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you let your creative nature shine. See ya. This is an unexpected update. I really wasn't loving the finished product of the last test, and I wish I had filmed this, but what I started to do, since I was pretty much going to toss this anyway, was start playing with the skin before it cured, that skin. And I started literally dragging it away with a stick. So here's a small piece of it right here. And I literally just kept pulling it off and sort of piled it up on the bottom here. And it's interesting what is going on underneath. So there is sort of like these little cute little wannabe cell-like things here. And the skin seems to want to be forming, wants to form again there. But this is not as horrible to me <laughs> as before. So I've still got little pieces of skin floating around that I may or may not fish out. But it's interesting. And what I also didn't say before was the Pebio has a cool effect. Um, I think that if you use it in a small amount here and there without using it as your main colorant, so like if you use other things to color some of some parts of your piece and you have like little moments of Pebio here and there, it might be pretty cool. 
And now I'm having some obsessive fun in making almost tie-dye like patterns. What's cool about resin is before it really starts to fully set, it is still movable and it'll sort of repair itself. So here's a piece that I'm going to drag away. And so when I drag it away, the resin looks like, oh my god, it's destroyed, but see how it repairs itself? And then it'll totally go back to perfectly flat. And so I've just been doing that and kind of seeing if I can make anything useful out of this little test. While I continue to play, I want to say thank you for sticking it out with me until the end. I hope you learned a few things too. Please give me a thumbs up if you did and share this too. See you in the next video. Remember to subscribe. Bye now.